ask graph ask graph what were we taught throughout school a b c's how do i feel about a b c's i don't like it how about ask graph airway is always going to be above all else sepsis yeah changes in potassium v fib cool glucose less than 70 let RG or grunting with pediatric patients, altered mental status, peritonitis, and hemorrhage. Ask graph. But wait a minute. How are we going to differentiate these? Airway above all else. But Dr. Z, Dr. Z, I saw a question on the boards that had hemorrhage and they had altered mental status. Okay, so I'm dealing with hemorrhage and altered mental status. How do I make these differentiated? Like, wait, but they had two of us graphs. We've got to ask ourselves, who do we have less time with? So pay attention now. Who do we have less time with? Write it down. But we've got two of them. We've got two of them. Is it hemorrhage or ultramental status? I don't know. Are both of them something I'm freaking out about? Yes. But now I ask myself, who do I have less time with? And then... I go, wait a minute. All right, cool. Let's think about this. I've got, and I'm giving an example of a board style question. Write this down. Write this down. Ready? A patient that is 82 years old that suddenly is confused. That's one patient. Or a patient who has internal bleeding and is receiving IV fluids and packed red blood cells. I gave you altered mental status and I gave you hemorrhage. Which one would I choose that I'm freaking out about? Suddenly confused, 82 year old. Why? Why? I made that question up off the top of my head right now. Do you think those of you that have taken the exam, does that sound like a prioritization question that you've seen? And now you're sitting there like, wait a minute, hemorrhaging and ultra mental status, but hemorrhaging, are they receiving? Fluids and packed red blood cells? Yes. They're already being treated. So who do I have less time with? Everyone with me? You see how it would mess you up if I was to write this question? Because ultimately, you've got to be able to understand. If a patient is septic, look at the words I'm using, they are septic and they are receiving antibiotics and fluids. Are we really concerned? Unless they're tanking, no. So is your practice question. We use a method here. Which of the following patients requires the most immediate? What do I say about freaking out about? F-O-A. What do I say about that? I go, what? First, initial, priority, urgent, most concerning, immediate report to HCP. Right? What's the word that sticks out to me? Why do you think, and, and this is so underestimated, 
people don't look at every single word. But Dr. Z, I got a question that kind of sounded like this. Kind of sounded and or sounded like. Big difference. Immediate. That word just changed everything on my approach to a question. So now I figure out the situation of nurses in the emergency department and is triaging several patients. Let's use the method. How do I, do I start with one? No. Do I start with four and make a decision? Let me modify my question. I don't start with four and make a decision. I do four and good. Compare it to three. Here we go. Let's do the method. A patient with a history of COPD complaining of increased shortness of breath and wheezing since this morning, or a patient with a known peanut allergy who is experiencing a mild rash after eating a dessert. Whoa. But why four? And why not three? Peanut allergy can be anaphylaxis. It could be. Is this screaming anaphylaxis? No. A mild, mild rash? Look at the word. It changes everything. What if I said hives? Or itching of the throat? Or a swollen tongue? Now which one are you freaking out about? then I would keep the peanut allergy, right? So now I'm getting rid of three and I keep four. A patient with a history of hypertension presenting with a blood pressure of 200 over 110. If I was to just read that real quick and I didn't read the rest of it, how would I feel? Whoa, 200 over 110. This person's had wheezing since the morning. This person's got 200 over 110. Did they even know they had that? No other symptoms. We have no idea that they, had, they didn't even know they had that type of a blood pressure. All right, let's take a step back. I'm gonna do some other stuff here. Take notes, take notes. COPD increased shortness of breath, cool, airway. Peanut allergy, but a mild rash with a peanut or an egg allergy or an anaphylactic rea uh, reaction to like penicillin, we'd be looking at hives. We'd be looking at airway, swollen tongue, strider, right? Tripod position. <sighs> a big deal. How about a person with a history of hypertension? Could they hemorrhage? They could. Are they? That's the difference. Are they having an anaphylactic reaction? No. Are they hemorrhaging? Are they having a hemorrhagic stroke? No. That's the difference. Is this person having airway compromise because they have shortness of breath? Yes. No, no, yes. That's how we got to look at this. <clears throat> so now we're down to 50-50. A patient who fell from a ladder and is now complaining of back pain, but has no visible injuries. Whew. Which one are we doing? And I love the way my students do this, four over one, because it's always using the method. Always use the method. You'll be surprised at, as to how organized your thought process is. So what do you think? Are we gonna stick with four? Four over one? Yeah, consensus, I'm with you. And again, our rationale we went through. I've explained all of them to you. 